नमस्कार श्रोताओं मैं आपकी होस्ट यशस्वी गुप्ता आपका स्वागत करती हूँ जेई सी आई सी नाइन्टी पॉइंट एट एफ के कार्यक्रम एक खास मुलाकात में जिसमें हम बात करते हैं कुछ नए लोगों से तो आज का आज हम आप लोगों को मिलवाने लाए हैं डॉक्टर एस पी मिश्रा सर से ये करियर काउंसलर है एंड ये पेरेंटिंग पे इन्होंने फिलहाल में एक किताब लिखी है नई किताब जिसमें इन्होंने पेरेंटिंग टेक्निक्स के बारे में बताया है तो अब हम सर से कुछ जानते हैं उनके बारे में फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी टू योर एफ एम स्टेशन जस्ट टू गिव ए ब्रीफ अबाउट माई सेल्फ आई आई एम डॉक्टर एस पी मिश्रा आई एम जॉइनिंग यू टूडे फ्रॉम हैदराबाद एंड बेस्ड इन हैदराबाद ए ब्रीफ अबाउट माई सेल्फ आई बीन इन दॉर्पोरेट्स फॉर अबाउट ट्वेंटी टू ईयर्स ट्वेंटी टू एंड हाफ ईयर्स इन द construction equipment industry i worked with a couple of multinational companies uh first started with a german multinational and later on with a uh, british multinational company um in mid of 2021 i uh, after finishing the corporate uh, jobs i started my own my own and started my own business and uh, one of the primary business is into the career guidance piece uh, so i am a certified career guidance uh, mentor i am um, also into overseas education consulting and uh, i am also a co-founder in one of the tech t- startup uh, it's called oneserve which is basically a exchange platform for uh, used equipment since i am from the construction equipment field Uh, so that's one more startup which is so i'm currently involved in three different uh, areas of business and one of them is uh, the career guidance and as yashasvi mentioned uh, very recently i uh, released my book uh, the book title of the book is what they don't teach in school and it is now available online on amazon and uh, flipkart and other platforms and also available on kindle so that's briefly about me okay so sir firstly i would like to know like you oh. told that you work with three different types of business fields so how do you manage your day work day with three different fields and three different workplaces uh fortunately in today's times the work is on uh, on a virtual space uh, in fact everything actually now happens uh, through the laptop and the phone and uh, things like that uh, uh, of course whenever there is a requirement i do travel to meet uh, customers uh, parents or students or even to different campuses as and when it is required but by and large my day to day activity everything is done over uh, virtual mode i do not have to travel to a specific office of course we do have offices all across india Uh, but um, the travel is only when there is a specific requirement otherwise i operate from home itself so sir what do you perceive as your greatest professional asset when i think uh, when it comes to my 22 and half years in the construction equipment field uh, with uh, two multinational companies uh, amongst a lot of other things the ability to travel across the length and breadth of india uh, um i was fortunate to work all across india in fact all the four corners of india um i've traveled uh, to more than 100 plus uh, towns and cities across india and about 25 different cities across the world and uh, amongst all other things i think the ability to travel because of the work uh, and meet different people and uh, know learn about different cultures language food and things like that and being able to adapt to different situations uh, that has been the greatest asset uh, which i can say from my professional career sir like you travel to many of the places throughout the world and even in india so what was the basic differences you found between india and the world cities i think the first and foremost uh, uh, glaring difference what you come to know is that if you travel to uh, some some of the developed countries like united kingdom or germany or or uh, uh, some of these countries you will immediately realize that in, ter- in terms of infrastructure they are far ahead uh, in terms of following processes following systems 
they are far ahead of uh, us even today of course uh, in india of course there are also a lot of development which is happening we are also moving towards that uh, but overall that is a striking difference uh, what one can visually make out the moment you go to any developed nation and uh, to a large extent also you will find that they are neat uh, very clean uh, you don't find dirt on the on the roads you don't find uh, any stray dog or cow traveling around on the road um, which i think most of the indian big cities have now uh, been able to achieve but we still are in the progress i think uh, that is a striking difference which i find uh, when i travel across to other cities around the world so sir like i would like to know don't you think like those traveling cows on road and stray dogs are the essence of indians um and that you are saying because i think uh, we have got used to seeing them uh, throughout our lives uh, but the moment you you get the opportunity to let's say work for uh, for an organization after your education for some time uh, in a developed country you will find lot of things which are quite normal i mean uh, the the uh, the public uh, transportation working on time everything clean the roads are clean people are not loitering around people are not uh, you know spitting on the road uh, these things become normal to you i think if you spend some time there you will find that as normal and when you come back you feel that uh, uh, obviously the stray dogs and the cows uh, probably they have a better place rather than being on the road uh, so while i'm not i'm not trying to say that uh, what is wrong or right what i'm trying only say is that our environment actually makes us to think that what is uh, okay and what is not okay uh, so it, it is just and I, i think all young people like you have to get exposed to uh, different parts of the world so that you can actually bring back the best of the world uh, to india and make india a much better place okay sir so sir now i would like to ask you about what motivated you to write a book on parenting why not any other topic yeah so in the last uh, about 3 years uh, since i took up uh, my entrepreneurship uh, in different areas uh, i started interacting with lot of students parents teachers uh, and mentors also um during these interactions i found out that uh, there is a uh, there is a need for such a book where uh, we are able to express uh, these ideas uh, to to the young children and to their parents and specifically why i am targeting the parents because if i directly speak to a uh, 10 year old or a 8 year old child today he or she may not be able to understand all the concepts very well but if i am able to explain the concepts to the young parents and they in turn are able to uh, model some of these ideas at home then there is a possibility that those ideas and those habits will be inculcated by the young children in due course of time uh, habit building doesn't happen in one day habit building takes many many years and typically that has to happen at home uh, home is the best place to start learning the right things and which is why the uh, the the book has been written based on the ideas uh, which are if you look at the book it is uh, segregated into three different categories the first three four chapters are related to habit building uh, the fourth chapter is talking about money which most of the education formal education system don't even teach us even in uh, uh, higher education in universities we don't learn what is the value of money so uh, one chapter is dedicated towards the value of money and why it is important and other chapters are related to the various global trends and one chapter is dedicated towards the 21st century skills uh, which can be started uh, which can be learned at home and things like that so the uh, the whole purpose was to reach out to more and more uh, parents who can actually become as better human being better models for their own children and and through that uh, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, much better prepared 
younger generation for the future of India? So I think this book will help the parents, like the new parents, especially the new couples which are going to have their first baby. Okay. So, sir, I would like to know that how do you view the growing generational gap between the parents and the children? Like nowadays, children don't listen to parents or they have a very weird attitude towards their parents. So, what would you like to, what are you your views on it? See, this is something called the generation gap uh, and generation gap is nothing new. It has been always there and it will continue to be there in the future also. Now, to understand the concept, I don't know how many of your listeners understand uh, uh, the, the different generations which have been defined um, uh, in, the, in the academics. Um, but broadly, to, just to tell you, you know, uh, in, di in different times in the history, there are uh, different generations. And starting with the first generation which has been academically recorded, is called the silent generation, which were the people who were born before 1945. Okay, then came the baby boomer, boomers. Um, why they are called baby boomers? Because uh, just after the World War II got over, that was a relative peace period, and during that time, there was a rapid growth in um, in 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 growth of. Uh, more children getting born I and mean, then um, people were not busy people were not getting killed by the war so that's why the the phase between 1946 to 1964 is called the baby boomers then uh, the next phase is called gen x which is 1965 to 1976 and then came gen y or gen millenniums they call it they call it gen millenniums uh, which is 1977 to 1995 and Gen Z is from 1996 to 2011. And the present generation is uh, from 2012 to the present times. Now, why there is a gap? The reason for this different gaps is because every generation when we are born, we are born in a earth or a, in an era which is very different from the next generation. Uh, I mean, take example of... Uh, uh, take example of let's say let us to understand this let's uh, understand the concept of Facebook. Now when I uh, when I started growing, I mean I I was born I was the Gen X part of the Gen X. When I was growing, obviously I didn't have I didn't know what is Facebook. Now the concept of Facebook came when around two thousand four. Okay, okay. So th the concept of Facebook, Instagram, all these things have come only in the. Uh, the 21st in 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 21st century okay no obviously those people who are born in this 21st century whether it is gen g or gen x they know more about uh, the facebook instagram and others compared to the time what i learned during my uh, period right as a child yeah. so obviously there will be always a gap between the people who are born now and people who are born during my time but what can be done is that as uh, as I am learning with every uh, passing year, everyone has to start learning about the new things uh, in every generation. Okay, and that is the only way that we can actually bridge the gap between the past generation to the future, future generation. Okay, and... After the Gen Alpha, the, obviously there will be some Gen Beta and I don't know what. Uh, we'll continue to have, okay? So, the only thing is that we have to keep learning new things and keep adapting. And that is how we can actually bridge the gap. So, getting exposure to the present generation is the most important for, especially for the parents. Absolutely. And be open and adaptive. Be open and adapting to what is happening now. And be willing to uh, change as per times. Grab things and enhance yourself according to the times. Absolutely. Okay, so sir, I would like to know, in what ways does parenting differs when raising multiple children and are the strategies to navigate these challenges? And what are the strat strategies to navigate these challenges? See, uh, uh, whether it is multiple children or uh, or one or two children the in the current times the parenting uh, uh, is something which is 
which is something we evolving because of the way things are actually changing in this world um the rapid changes with respect to technology the rapid changes with respect to the geopolitical and the rapid changes with respect to uh, the socio economic situation all that is actually impacting our lives so um of course i would first of all argue that um in india itself if you look at it uh, the reproduction rate today in india is about 2.1 which means that every young uh, young uh, parents i mean couples they are uh, at max having two children at max most of them have actually single children and few exceptions are there where they have more than two children so on an average the rate is about 2.15 right now in india so obviously the people have ex- uh, accepted the fact that it is very expensive Uh, to raise multiple number of children in india so most of them stick to just one or two children and uh, whether it is one child or two children or three children the uh, adaptability has to be same it is not going to be different of course if you have more than one child at home uh, the advantage of that is that two children when they are growing together the socio economic the uh, cognitive development which is the cognitive uh, skills which are which comes only when you are growing together in a, as part of siblings then that actually that actually develops faster than compared to a single child so that is definitely one advantage but apart from that all other factors are very very similar for any parent whether it is a single child or for a multiple number of children and whether it is somebody is in a city or in any rural location uh, parenting today requires adaptability to know about what is happening in the world and accordingly take uh, charge and be proactive because uh, uh, the rate of change or the what is going to change is not in our control what we can adapt is in our control so i think that will also shape the future for their stu- uh, children because exactly. the thing parents will learn will only be forwarded to the children so, absolutely so, so sir how do you intend to navigate the influence of technology on parenting in the modern era okay so uh, when you talk about technology i feel you are probably asking me about uh, the social the uh, technology with respect to the social Uh, networks uh, and other things social and media, primarily the yes sir digital platforms yeah, and social media digital platforms and probably the high tech mobile phones and on the connected devices at home so uh, in my view technology is something which is actually is part of our lives today right we have to live with it we have to learn how to live with this technology we cannot avoid it okay what is most important is that we should uh, we should keep in mind as that technology should be used as as something which is a strength for us and we should not become a slave to the technology now how do we how do we do that my simple suggestion would be that i know i mean it is it may sound very radical to many many of the young parents and to probably to you as well probably but to the extent possible if you can reduce to share personal information on social platform especially things like uh, uh, facebook and instagram um any reduction of in information sharing on pl- personal platforms is actually going to be a big benefit for you because all these information whatever you're sharing especially your personal information uh, whether it is what you're eating or where you're eating what you're wearing or who are your friends and and so on and so forth these are the crucial information which the social technology platforms are gathering continuously and they will use it for their benefit it is not going to benefit you okay to large to a large extent if you can reduce using that social platform it is good 
um, of course, I'm not saying that you should actually totally withdraw from the social platforms. You have to use social platforms because that's where a lot of people are also there. So with respect to business, probably you will continue to use. But to the extent possible, try to reduce using these social platforms for using or sharing personal information because that's going to be dangerous for you. We do not know what is the future of AI. What AI can do in the years to come, we do not know. So to that extent, please be aware of this and try to be careful about this. And uh, and and uh, at the same time, can you have to also start learning about AI because AI is part of our lives today. Um, how to use the AI? You can actually take up different types of online courses which are available. And I would strongly recommend you should actually try and do that at least once in a year. Take up some new skills with respect to AI to learn. And if you are not very conversant with uh, learning online, then probably read books. Or maybe take up uh, support from experts. But uh, adapting and learning new things is very, very mandatory. Otherwise, uh, it will become very, very difficult for you to uh, live in a uh, world which is constantly evolving, constantly adapting to new, new technologies. Okay. I hope uh, I hope I have been able to explain this clearly. Yes, and I think this is one of the most important part which both the parents and the students need to learn. Because sharing yeah. personal information is very critical on these platforms. And I, exactly. I, and I agree with you what you said. And not, this is something which is not theoretical. Actually, I have done it myself. I used to have personal accounts on Facebook and Instagram. I have deleted them. I think it is necessary because people share too much of their personal life and they start showing off on social media that we went here, we went there. And that becomes yeah. like in future, it can act as a barrier to yourself. Absolutely. So, sir, how do you perceive the role of traditional education systems in preparing young students for future professional success? Unfortunately, it's very limited. Um, uh, to understand this, I think we will let's understand how the status of higher education is in India. Is uh, You know, yes, yes we, uh, children like you, for example, every year 4.15 crore students like you join the higher education every year in India. 4.15 crore. You are one among them. Okay? And you know how many of them pass out of this system every year? Hardly one or two, I think. One or two crore. Yeah. One crore. Only one crore pass out of this system every year. So, four crore are getting inside the system and one crore is coming out of the system. So, I don't know what is happening to the balance 3 crore. Maybe they are dropping off the, or they are not completing the education. I don't know. Uh, there are no official data to prove it. But this data is available uh, on on uh, public forum. So, that's why I am quoting these data. And those 1 crore people who are, who are coming out of the higher education system, is there a formal job for everybody? Uh, the answer is no. Formal job sector in India is uh, hardly contributing or is able to cater to an only 5% of people who are in the age category of 18 to 60. So, who are employable? Basically, anybody who is any, any person in India who is in the age category of 18 to 60 is an employable person, right? And that person has to be doing something either formally or informally. So, as per the data available, currently in India, only 5% of the such people are working in a formal job sector. Okay? Okay, 5% ka matlab kya hoa ki uh, those uh, jobs where there is a salary, there is a PF, there is a gratuity, there are leave policies and it's a proper organization where, where there are group of people working there. Exactly. So that is a formal job sector. That is only 5%. And balance 95% of the people are still working in informal jobs. Okay. And out of the biggest contributor is actually agriculture. Agriculture is still 
one of the largest contributor of uh, in india for uh, employment but unfortunately it is all informal why it is called informal because it is not a salary you are paid on a daily basis there is no pf there is no gratuity there is no insurance nothing you work there is no there is no, no 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 job security okay so that is the state of indian uh, professional uh, work system yeah so um, are the education system doing something about it i think they are making some attempt i think the new education policy or the national education policy the nep 2020 um yeah which 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 is a step in that direction where skin development and so and so forth are a not a focus uh, in these policies but the implementation in a country like india will take many many years so on the ground for to really see the impact of this is going to see in lot of years uh, but a step has t- has been taken in the direction Uh, but it is it is still a, i would say uh, it's going to take many years before we we can we can really see that uh, formal job sector growing big time in india so unfortunately this is the situation i do not have a great positive answer for this yes sir so i think this is was the reality of indian society is ki they want this to children to pass out with a very good success but then job opportunities are not there for them like absolutely many of the parents yes sir many of the parents want that their children should be doctors and engineers but there are no specific job opportunities for those percentage of doctors and engineers uh, let me since you talked about doctors and engineers let me give some numbers okay in india in india about between 15 to 17 lakh students appear for mbbs exam every year and you know how many seats are there i think around just thousands it's in thousands only uh less than 1 lakh it's a, it's about close to about 90000 huh okay so where is 15 17 lakhs children appearing for mbbs and where are the number of seats so let us assume that including dental and everything put together uh, approximately 1 lakh children get into you know the field of medicine medical field what happens to the balance 16 17 15 to 16 lakh children being in depression and dropping out from their lives yeah of course i mean they take up some alternative course and things like that but imagine the kind of trauma if you do not get into a mbbs uh, stream if you if you are aspiring and your parents are aspiring for it okay this story for engineering is also no different okay in india um, uh, roughly about 10 lakh children 8 to 10 lakh children are passing out of engineering uh, education system every year and only 50% of them actually get into a formal job absolutely sir yes rest of the 50% engineers do not have a job also do not have a job probably not in the engineering sector yes they work in different sectors to just have a living yes so four years of engineering and lakhs of rupees uh, spent on engineering and you uh, end up doing something else okay so this is the uh, sad part but yeah i mean uh, of course there are there are good things also as not that everything is bad but uh, in india if you have to i mean as young people like you i think i must tell you that suppose you want to become uh, the best uh, in in your cohort i mean in your cohort there will be around 4 crore children and when i say your cohort you're born probably in the year about uh, which year are you born you are born in 2006 right so uh, children born between 2002 to 2006 is a, approximately 4 crore okay so you are amongst them okay so if you want to succeed in your life in a professional career 
then you have to become the top one or two percent of the, that four crore. Actually, sir, that is the kind of competition we have in India right now. So, whichever field, whichever field, whether it is uh, uh, engineering or medicine or, or journalism or entertainment, any field you choose, if you want to be the best in India, then you have to be in the top one or two percent. Actually, sir. And sir, what, Mala, what, what would you like to say about those upcoming fields like uh, hospitality, then graphic designings, fashion designings, even journalism for that matter? It's also mass communication, actually, I should say. Okay. The good part is that uh, uh, the opportunities in every field is abundant. That is a good part. And I will explain you how. Um... In India, I mean, India fortunately is the largest country with respect to population. We have overtaken China. So we are about 1.42 billion or at around 142 crore people right now. And uh, probably by 2050 or 2060, we'll become around 1.6 crore, uh, I mean, uh, 1.6 billion or 1.7 billion. And by that time, world population also will become also Currently, world population is around 8 billion and uh, by 2050, it will be around 9 billion or 9.5 billion. Okay. Um, so, which means that the basic requirement, human requirement of anyone is going to be growing, whether it is food or education or uh, entertainment or medicine or housing, clothing, any basic requirement of human being will actually grow. So, which means that any field you take up as a youngster, whether it is in India or outside India, the opportunities are enormous. Because, because the population is growing so much, opportunities are there in every field. Okay? The only thing is, you have to be the best in that particular field. Hmm. So, basically, it's on your skills that you will get an opportunity to work in any of the field you Yes. Work. And opportunities are there in any field. Just that you have to be best in your skills. And you have to take up something which is in line with your ability, your strength, your personality. And which is something which you like to do every day. Then you will definitely succeed. Anything you do. And I think parents are also trying to understand that only not only doctor and engineer at points, different fields also work better than those. Absolutely. And that's the whole purpose of this book actually. The purpose of this book is to explain that opportunities are there in every field. Yes, sir. So, sir, how do you believe the insight and activities presented in your book can be practically implemented by both young and uh, young parents and professionals in daily life? Okay. So, uh, the um, book, whatever concepts I have explained in the book are something which I have actually done it myself. And I have made sure that my children at home, I've got two teenage children at home. Uh, they also have adopted some of it. My wife uh, is also somebody who has adopted some of it. It is not something which I have just theoretically written for the purpose of writing a book. These are the practical things which have been explained and which is something which I have myself done it. Okay, And I have seen my own children and my own um, uh, mentees who, who, whom I have mentored over the years. Even they have adapted and some of the parents who have read my book um, they have gone uh, given excellent feedback about what they think about the book. Uh, so it is all doable. It is practical. It is doable. It is just that the parents have to make an intent. Uh, they initially, when you try something new, it, you will find that always it is difficult. But if you have to create a new habit, you have to start small. You have to start small. Start small and practice every day, then definitely over a period of time you can achieve. Yes. So sir, can I ask your personal parenting experience? Like, I think it will motivate parents to read your book. Yeah. 
so uh, personally uh, uh, when i when i uh, talk about both my children in fact uh, both bo- uh, i got a son and a daughter son is in in, in the, he just completed his 12th grade um uh, and like any other parents when you passed out uh, in the 10th grade with about 93% we were also tempted to send him for a you know typical engineering um you know coaching class and things like that but uh, what we have allowed our children to do at home is to be able to think and do things on their own and express themselves and because of that he took a decision saying that no i uh, i want to pursue my own uh, passion which is basically into graphic design and and things like that he himself is a, a good artist uh, has won lot of state national and international awards um and he has taught at global arts uh, uh, the institution many of the south indian uh, 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 people you will know about global art i don't know how much of, how much of it is actually there in north so he took a decision in he during that break between 10th grade to 11th grade he took a decision saying that no i i want to pursue my uh, 11 12th in humanities and we we actually let him do that so he did uh, two years of humanities and uh, he has appeared now for nift and uh, other competitive exams and some of it is uh, he has cleared uh, some of the levels we are expecting results soon and hopefully uh, he will get into a professional career which is as per his strength uh, okay and uh, so this is something which practically as parents with um, myself and my wife we have done that with our children and our second child is a daughter uh, who has just got into the 12th grade now and uh, she is a professional kathak tran- dancer uh, for st- last 10 years uh, she has learned kathak Yeah, and she has performed in many uh, national and uh, international stages and um, she has liking for english language hopefully she will take up something uh, uh, a combination of uh, pursuing arts which is basically pursuing her kathak uh, as a profession and also parallelly probably pursue english as a literature and maybe journalism or something uh, 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 this is the phase where she is actually making her own decisions uh, she is in the 12th grade now so we are letting her to decide what to do uh, so this is how both our children have uh, been uh, growing in their into their adulthood i'm saying and uh, it is doable i mean i myself uh, uh, i am a mechanical engineer by profession uh, and a, and a, a management graduate and and after that i have done my phd so i can easily got influence and and i would have forced both my children to take up engineering which i i registered doing okay and it is doable and there are opportunities in empty areas so my sincere request to anyone who is who is listening to this conversation or are able to see our conversation i would request uh, think about it think about your child not from your dream but from the d- dream of the child imagine 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 your child to 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 do something which will make him or her happy for next 40 50 years because the education is only for about 20 22 20 to 3 23 years then rest of the 40 50 years are the professional career imagine if they have to be happy remain happy for 40 50 years after education so what is important the you know, the dream of the parents are important or the 50 years of child life is more important so sure, sir i can relate with you very well because even my parents allowed me to pursue the career which i wanted like uh, and i am pursuing in a music degree in since 11 like classical music fantastic yes sir and fantastic. Uh, with that i did my 11th and 12th in humanities so everyone in the family was like she has to give upsc but then my parents were like it's her choice whether she wants to or not and 
on a mm. serious note i am not at all interested but they are like ki you should try it once because it will help you in your future but then i am resisting it because i am not interested i want my career in either journalism or in music field or audio industries so they support me also and at points they guide me well that which is the best way like my best supporter is my mother she she is always there as my back hand and support she always gives me so i think that this should help the parents like the ones which are very typical with their mindset that no our child should go in doctory or engineering only or the third option nowadays is upsc like they should get to know that there are various fields and it has to be according to the child what they want to do i think this conversation will really be helpful for them i hope it reaches out to all the all the uh, target audience and hopefully some of them some of them are able to make the right kind of choice in their life and if that is possible then i'll be really glad and happy that this conversation has taken place today yes sir. so now moving towards the end i would like lastly i would like to ask you that as a career counselor and an parenting counselor both what would you like to suggest to the upcoming parents and the students both for their career and better future so i think uh, uh, just to summarize whatever i spoken so so far um especially to the parents uh, i would suggest if you if you have young children at home um please make sure that you are becoming a good model at home i mean when i say model at home matlab typically modeling ka nahi baat kar raha hu main what i am trying to say is that are role model yes are you a role model for your child whatever behavior you have the same behavior will be copied by the child um in every aspect the way you speak the way you treat others the way you um uh, uh, no do anything okay anything which you do is actually getting copied by your child okay of course i am not saying that the uh, children don't copy others they of course copy others also they copy their friends they they copy other things at school as well but you as parents have a very very important role to try and see as much as possible to become a good role model and to that to that extent um parenting is not something which is going to be easy it is a it is a responsibility uh on the parents uh to to do that sometimes you have to sacrifice your happiness uh, for the sake of children uh, which i think our parents have done it i'm sure the future parents also will do it uh, so this is something which i would simply say that uh, you should do that and uh, as far as the future career for your child please imagine do you want to see your child to be happy for the 40 50 years of their professional career or not uh, answer that question if you get the right answer then accordingly you will do right things for your child okay and uh, to the children um i know different age group children probably are going to see this or hear this conversation um uh, uh, since it is part of the university i think lot of young children like you also will be listening to this um um so some of you probably are not sure as to what to do don't worry if you imagine the professional career is going to be for 40 50 years in the in the horizon of 40 50 years if you are not able to understand what to do in the next 2 3 years it is absolutely fine explore different things experiment with different things and if required even if you fail also in your experiment it is absolutely fine the initial failures in your career is not a failure it is a learning for you the, the fail as it is stands no first attempt in learning so exactly exactly so be open and uh, and uh, learn to uh, embrace failure if you are able to if you are happy and um, is uh, uh, are okay to embrace failure then uh, then obviously there's lot which can happen keep your keep yourself open to new ideas all the time because 
what is going to be the future of work we do not know most of the most of the jobs of 2030 have not been discovered even today okay so be open and it is okay if you fail initially for some time so sir i hope this conversation will be helpful for everyone around us and thank you so much sir for joining us today like i think this will help both the students and the parents and even the upcoming generations to come thank you so much sir for uh, being here today thank you thank you thank you for hosting me and it's it was nice talking to you yashashvi and i wish you uh, a lot of happiness and success in your future career thank you so much baato se dil ko manaye geeto se main sun sajaye ye bas बोले नहीं है दिल की भी सुनता जाए 90.8 पॉइंट ये दिल की बातें दिलों को सुनाए जे ई सी आर सी नाइन्टी पॉइंट